Hello everyone! In this video, we are going to discuss the types of functions and their graphs. So for this lesson, our learning objectives are the following. First, you should be able to distinguish the various types of functions. And second, identify the different properties of the types of functions. To attain these learning objectives, we need to answer the essential question, what are the different types of functions and how to differentiate one from the other. First function is the polynomial function. It is a function of this form where n is a non-negative integer and a sub n is not equal to zero. Under the polynomial function, it has different types. First, zero degree is a constant function. First degree is a linear function. And under it, we have identity function. Second degree is called quadratic function. Third degree, cubic function. Fourth degree, quartic function. And fifth degree, quintic function. For degrees 6 and above, they're all called polynomial functions. Now, let's get to know each polynomial function. The first is the constant function. It is a zero degree polynomial function in the form f of x is equal to c, where c is a constant. To find the domain and range, take note that the domain is a set of real numbers while the range is y equals c, which is the constant. Let's have an example. As you can see on this example, we have the function f of x is equal to 6. The graph is a horizontal line that extends both left and right continuously, which means it covers all real numbers on the x-axis, the positive, the negative, and the zero. That's why the domain is a set of real numbers. While the range, as you can see on the y-axis, it only touches the value of 6, which means that the range is y is equal to 6. Let's have the next function. We have the linear function. The linear function is defined as a first-degree polynomial function of the form f of x is equal to mx plus b, where m is a slope and it cannot be equal to 0, and b is called the y-intercept. The domain and range of any linear function are both set of real numbers. Let's have the examples here. The first is f of x is equal to 2x minus 5. As you can see, the slope is a positive number, which is 2. That's why the graph is a slanting line that is rising to the right. But if the slope is a negative number, just like the second example here, which is negative 2, the graph is a slanting line that is rising to the left. But the domain and range are both real numbers because you can input any value of x and you can get any real number of y. Under the linear function, we have the identity function. It is a special type of linear function in the form of f of x is equal to x. That is why it is called identical, which means to say, if x is 1, y is 1. If x is 2, y is 2. That is why it is called an, an identity function. The domain and range are both set of real numbers because as we can see on this graph, this is the only graph of identity function, which is a slanting line that is rising to the right, and the x and y values are the same, just like 2, 2, 3, 3, negative 1, and negative 1. So this is the identity function. The next type of function is the quadratic function. It is a second degree polynomial function in the form of f of x is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are all real numbers and a is not equal to zero. The domain of any quadratic function is a set of real numbers. Well, for the range, we have to follow this. If a is greater than zero, then the range is y is greater than or equal to 4ac minus b squared all over 4a. Wherein, to get this value, you will just simply substitute the values of a, b, and c. While when a is less than 0, you will just simply use less than or equal to. Now, let's take a look at these two graphs. The graph of a quadratic function is called a parabola. So here, the parabola opens upward because the value of a is positive. And for the range of this graph, as you can see, the lowest point is 0. From 0, it goes up, 
Therefore, its y is greater than or equal to 0. Second example, the value of a is negative, and so the opening now is downward. Since the opening is downward, locate the vertex, which is at negative 2. So it means to say that the values of y are all from negative 2 downwards, and so the range is y less than or equal to negative 2. Next function, we have the cubic function. It is a third-degree polynomial function wherein the term with the highest exponent of 3 should not be equal to 0. And the domain and range of any cubic function are both set of real numbers. Next function, we have the quartic function. It is a fourth-degree polynomial function wherein the term ax raised to 4 should not be equal to 0. For the domain, it is the set of real numbers. Well, for the range, we have to follow this. If a is greater than 0, then the range is y greater than or equal to k, where k is the highest or lowest point in the graph. Since a is greater than 0, the opening is upward, and so k is the lowest point. While if a is less than 0, then the range is y less than or equal to k, just like the image here. As we can see here, the quartic function opens downward. And so the value of k here is the highest point, which is the value of 1. And so the range of this function is y is less than or equal to 1. Next. We have the quintic function. Quintic function is the fifth degree polynomial function wherein the term ax raised to 5 should not be equal to 0. And the domain and range of any quintic function are both set of real numbers. After the polynomial function, we have the absolute value function. It is a function in the form of f of x is equal to a absolute value symbol x minus h plus k. In this function, the domain is always set of real numbers. Well, for the range, we have to follow this. a is greater than 0, then the value of the range is y is greater than or equal to k. If a is less than 0, then the range is y is less than or equal to k. Let's have an example. As we can see here, the value of a here is positive. That's why the opening of the absolute value function is upward. By the way, the graph of an absolute value function is always in the form of V-shape. Okay? Just like the examples here. Now, the domain is a set of real numbers, meaning you can substitute any real number to x in this function. There's no restriction. As for the range, it will only cover 0 to positive numbers because when you take the absolute value of any real number, it will only result to 0 and positive numbers. And so the range is y is greater than or equal to 0. Next example, as we can see here, the value of a is negative and so the opening is downward. Now, since the opening is downward, when we find the value of the range, we're going to use less than or equal to the value of k. Here in this function, the k value is positive 1, which is obvious in our graph that positive 1 is the highest point. So from positive 1 downward, that gives us the value of the range. Radical function. It is a function in the form of f of x is equal to n square root of g of x. Take note that in getting the domain, we have to exclude the values of x that will make the radicand negative because when the radicand is negative, it will not result to a real number. In radical function, we're going to cover the following case. The first case is f of x is equal to the square root of mx plus b, where the radicand is a linear function. In this case, when the value or the sign is positive, then the domain is x greater than or equal to negative b over m, while the range is y is greater than or equal to 0. While when the sign is negative, then the range becomes less than or equal to 0. Look at this example. f of x is equal to the square root of x. Exclude the values of x that 
are not allowed in this function. And those are the negative values. So we can only substitute zero and positive numbers for the x in this function. And so the domain is x is greater than or equal to zero. Since the only allowed values for x are zero and positive numbers, in the range as well, we cannot have the negative numbers. And so the range is greater than or equal to zero. The next case is when the radicand is a quadratic function of the form x squared minus r squared. In this case, the r squared is the constant. Looking at this example, as we can see here, there are two separate graphs, meaning they are not connected. And so to get the domain, we need to use the connector or. First, get the domain from the left side of the graph x less than or equal to negative r, followed by the domain from the right graph, which is x greater than or equal to r. And since we are excluding the values that will make this radical negative, the range is greater than or equal to zero. Well, for this case, when the value is now negative, the range will change to less than or equal to zero. Looking at this example, we have the square root of x squared minus 4. So since 4 is r squared, the r is the square root of this. The square root of 4 is 2. So r is 2. It can be negative 2 or it can be positive 2. Third case, we have the square root of r squared minus x squared. In this case, we have to follow this domain and range. So as we can see in our graph, the graph of this function is a semicircle. So since it's a semicircle, the values of x and y are just between these two values that are being covered by the semicircle for the x and these two values that are being covered in the y-axis. And so the domain is a set of x such that x is greater than or equal to negative r but less than or equal to r. While for the range, it's between 0 and r. This is when the value outside the radical sign is positive. But when the value outside the radical sign is negative, this semicircle is now under the x-axis. I hope everyone can visualize it. If that is the case, then the domain is between negative r and positive r. It's still the same. But for the range, it will be from the negative value here to 0. That's why we have negative r and 0 here. The next type of function is the piecewise defined function. It is a function that is made by putting together pieces of different functions, meaning it is a combination of any type of function. It can be, let's say, quadratic and constant function. It can be a radical function and absolute value function and so on. To find the domain and range, take note, look at the x-axis from left to right. For the range, you just have to look at the y-axis from down to up. So in this example, we have this function, x squared, if x is not equal to 2, 7 if x equals 2. In a piecewise function, always take note that every subfunction has its corresponding condition for its domain. So you have to take note of this condition. And based on this function, we have this graph. And to analyze this, for the domain, as you can see from the left side of our graph, this one is continuously moving upward and to the left, which means all negative values are being covered. Zero is also included because the graph touches zero. And for the right side, it covers all values as well. By the way, this point represents that the value is not included. However, in this point, since it's shaded, it means to say that 2 is included. Therefore, the domain is a set of real numbers. For the range, as we can see in this graph, looking at the y-axis down to up, we don't have negative values. The graph is started at point 0 and it goes up continuously based on these parts of the graph which shows that all positive values are included in the range plus the zero. 
And so, the range is y greater than or equal to 0. Next example, we have a piecewise function which contains three subfunctions and each has a corresponding condition on its domain. So, to find the domain, we have to analyze the x-axis from left to right. As we can see here, this portion of our graph is moving continuously to the left since it has an arrowhead. And then this side is also moving continuously going to the right. And as you can see here, in this middle, all values of x are covered. Since all negative, all positive, and zero are covered, then the domain is a set of real numbers. But please take note that the domain is not always set of real numbers. It just so happened here that both domain are set of real numbers. For the range, as you can see here, down to up, these two portions of our graph are moving continuously downward. While here, at the top of the x-axis, the highest point is only at this point, which is point 3. We don't have a graph higher than this point, and so the range is only from 3 downwards. And to write it down in this symbol, we have y less than or equal to 3. At this point, it is your time to apply what you have learned in our discussion. Determine the type of each function. You may pause the video so you can answer the questions. Let's check your work. First function, it is a linear function. Second, it's a radical function. Third, absolute value. And fourth, piecewise defined function. Let's move to the next. Here, given the graph of the function, determine the type. First, it's an absolute value. Second, it's a quadratic function. And the third is a radical function. Now, to end, take note that in this video, we only discuss the common types of functions. And for you to be able to differentiate one from the other, you need to familiarize yourselves with the different uh, properties of the functions. Thanks for watching. So if you are new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell to be updated. Bye!